Vegetables provide food to people in villages and cities and can often be sold for a high price. Vegetables require special care, especially when the plants are young. Some farmers use fishing nets to keep goats and chickens out of seedbeds. But young vegetable seedlings are also vulnerable to pests that cut the tender stems or feed on leaves. When these insects attack our chili, it is finished. All plants are spoiled. These small insects that fly over the plants destroy our peppers. To protect their young crops, many farmers use pesticides. While pesticides are expensive, they are also dangerous for the health of farmers, consumers and the environment. We reduce the use of pesticides because it makes us sick. To avoid spending money at the hospital, we protect our young crops with nets. In addition with the nets, the plants grow very well. Before we learn how to install an insect net, let's take a closer look at some of the pests that can attack your seed bed. Knowing that many of them attack at night will convince you of the need to install insect nets over your seed bed. Various pests can destroy our seed beds. Mice dig and eat the seeds that you plant. Snails cut the seedlings from the moment they emerge. And also grasshoppers come and eat the seedlings. Therefore, we need to use insect nets so that our seed bed is protected at all times. Grasshoppers and snails can be a serious problem for any vegetable seed bed as they chew the tender stems of seedlings. To avoid damage, leave the nets closed day and night. Caterpillars can also cause damage, but more so on tomato and cabbage than on chili. When moths lay their eggs on crops at night, the larvae that hatch will start feeding on your tomato or cabbage plants. Insect nets can prevent moths from laying eggs directly on your seedlings. Most caterpillars will not be able to get through the small mesh of the net. But better make sure the nets have no holes in them, as the caterpillars will crawl all over the net and find even the slightest hole to drop down and get to their preferred food. There are yellowish slender caterpillars trying to get through the holes. That's why we take care to find these holes to repair them. Otherwise, once the caterpillars get into the nursery, they hide under the leaves and soon cause damage. Whiteflies damage vegetable crops in other ways than by eating leaves or stems. Hidden underneath the leaves, they suck the sap from the plant and by doing so, slow down its growth. When a whitefly sucks the sap of a plant infested with a virus, it can transfer these germs from the sick plant to healthy plants. Whiteflies live in large numbers on a wide range of plants. They're difficult to control with insecticides because whiteflies quickly become accustomed to the poison. After you've sprayed a few times, the insecticide no longer kills the whiteflies. And soon, there may be more whiteflies than before. As long as the insect nets have no holes, they can keep out whiteflies and protect your seedlings from virus diseases transmitted by whiteflies. Before installing the net, carefully check and repair any holes. 
Now that we understand that insect nets help us to protect our seedlings, even when we're asleep, let us see how to install them. While special insect nets exist, you can also buy material from the local market and make your own insect net, as shown by Thierry Atiogbe, president of the Vegetable Growers Association of Kome in southern Benin. To know what size of insect net you will need, add one meter to the length and the width of the seedbed so you can properly close all the edges of the net. So for a seedbed of 1 meter by 2 meters, your net should be 2 meters by 3 meters. Filet à nous bien mis dans la plaie nyao parce que mis zanga y mis vai plaie. It's important to buy nets as we've spent money to buy chili seeds, manure and other things to install our seed bed. Without a net, all these efforts might be in vain. So it's important to protect our seed beds with insect nets, to protect our investments, all the energy we've put in them and to guarantee the life of the seedlings. Having had his net made at the local tailor, Thierry now installs his seed bed. To support the net, you can use locally available materials such as branches, sticks, or the solid mid nerve of palm leaves. Cut the sticks long enough so the net will be about half a meter above the soil. Remove sharp angles, as these may damage the net. Place the arches at both ends of the seed bed, and one or more in the middle if you have a large seed bed. This will prevent the net from hanging down and touching the seedlings. Cover the seed bed with mulch, such as palm leaves, to keep the soil moist, and install the net. Put soil all around the edges of the net to properly close it and to keep pests from crawling underneath it. Open the net eight to nine days later to remove the palm leaves when the young seedlings emerge. Although you can leave the net closed all the time, it's advisable to observe your seedlings from time to time. When you notice that your seedlings are suffering from the heat, you can place some palm leaves around or on top of the net to give shade. Only remove the net when you're about to transplant the chili. If nets are properly maintained and stored, they can be used for several seasons. Nets can be torn in a strong wind, or if children start to play with them, or if animals bother them. Let's recap what we have learned. Vegetable seedlings are often attacked by snails, grasshoppers and other insects. Protect your seedlings by putting an insect net over them. Leave the net closed all the time and repair any holes. Check from time to time to make sure your seedlings have no problems. At transplanting, remove the net and keep it in a safe place for future use. To other farmers, I would say that there is no need to use a lot of pesticides on the crops, so they should make an effort to cover their crops with nets to protect their nurseries.